worship this third Sunday of the season of Lent. We have uh, many special guests and members who uh, form the first, Lutheran, first Lutheran Orchestra, so we'll be giving them another special welcome during our worship this morning. And we'll extend a special welcome to any worshiping with us for the first or few times. Expect to be warmly greeted by those who you see it with and if you have any questions ask the ushers or I look forward at the end of worship to answering them as well. Two announcements concerning the life of the congregation from uh, Ben and Janine. Good morning everybody. I uh, just wanted to um, highlight the insert that you have in your bulletin this morning for spring dreams. Doesn't that sound nice? Uh, and that is a wonderful concert hosted by uh, First Events this coming Saturday at 4 p.m. That is Saturday, 4 p.m. Spring Dreams uh, will be um, provided um, for by uh, operatic tenor Brandon Teal and Opala Billborn on the piano. Uh, there's a free will offering that goes to benefit our community. Uh, so please uh, come and bring a friend this Saturday, 4 p.m. Spring Dreams. Good morning to you all. I want to tell you about an event coming up. It's going to take place April 27th, and it's the Spring Salad Luncheon. This year, however, it's going to be very different, and here's why. Once every four years, the women of our church are hosts for the Spring Gathering of the Boy Conference in our Synod. There's about 15 churches in our, synod, in our conference. Because our salad luncheon and the spring gathering were going to take place so close together, the women's board decided to combine events, making it extra special for everyone involved. It'll take place Saturday, April 27th, starting at 8.30 a.m., when we will check in and enjoy coffee and coffee cake. There will be a worship service with communion, a short business meeting, our program, and then lunch will be served in the Fellowship Hall. Our program will be presented by Dr. John Haberlin, who is with Mission de Milagros. I think that's how you pronounce it. It means Mission of Miracles. He and his colleagues travel each year to Honduras to do corrective surgeries for the impoverished, impoverished people there. He'll have a slight presentation telling about his experiences and will also be bringing handmade items from Honduras that will be available for sale. Part of the day's offering will also be given to Dr. Haberlin to further his mission. It should prove to be a very interesting program. The culmination of the morning will be a chicken salad lunch with all the trimmings while viewing uniquely decorated tables done by our own church ladies, and the tables are always amazing. The cost for the whole morning, only $8. What a bargain. Registration for the event will be today, between services, of course, that's already gone by, but it will also be the next two Sundays. You may also send your reservation into the church office. Everyone does have to pre-register, however, to let us know how many are going to attend. So, set aside Saturday, April 27th. Come enjoy the music, the food, and the fellowship with our ladies and also the ladies of uh, the conference. I hope to see you all there. It's going to be a great morning. Thank you, Ben, with First Events and Janine of the First Lutheran Church Women. Please stand for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who gathers us in the wilderness to redeem us, anoint us, and make us new. Amen. In these 40 days, let us be honest, confess our sin, and receive God's promise of mercy.
God at the margin. We are the of Hymn to Joy or Ode to Joy. Some of you might know this, but there's some different words to it. Could we have you just play, um, I don't know if you're prepared for this. And the words are going to be on the screen. Has anyone heard that tune before? Maybe a little bit? Okay. So our, our gathering song today 
Um, we're get, we get to hear from these great musicians, and we're going to sing along. So why don't we stand and we can read the words off of the screen as we sing. That must be a sign of spring, right? So today we're going to talk about a parable. Let's, um, does anybody know what a parable is? Hmm. Parable. It's a story that uses something common every day to teach a lesson. And they often use people or places or things that people knew about. So, can you think of any parables that Jesus told? He was known for doing this a lot. If you didn't know what parable was, this might be kind of a hard question. Madeline? Noah's Ark? That is a story in the Bible that was not one of the parables that Jesus told. Jesus told some stories about um, the prodigal son. He told can you stop, please? He told the story, the parable of the mustard seed. Today we're going to learn about a parable of a fig tree. Has anyone ever seen a fig? You've seen a fig? What is a fig? Kind of like a fruit. Kind of crunchy, maybe? Okay. It tastes like raisins? Okay. You might
kind of tried a dried fig. <laughs> so a fig looks like this picture. I didn't bring um, I didn't bring a fresh fig, but I, I have a bag of dried figs. This was a fruit that grew in the Holy Land, so people in Jesus' time would have been really familiar with this, kind of like we're really familiar with apples, because apples grow around here. So this is a fig, and Jesus told this story um, that we're going to learn more about in our lessons today, but I want you to remember this lesson, that Jesus loves all of you, and he really wants each of you to hear and understand his message. So we're going to say a prayer with the entire congregation, and on your way out, I actually have a little bit of fig. This is a dried fig for each of you to try. So first we're going to say our prayer, and then before you head to your Journey of Faith class, um, you can grab a little piece on your way. So would the congregation please rise for our prayer of the day? Let's pray together. Dear Jesus, thank you. Running it to others. Be with us as we listen, learn, for growing closer today. Help us never forget your sacrifice. Amen. Come take a piece of fig if you would like, and then you can head towards the back to find your shepherds. First reading comes from the book of Isaiah, chapter 55. <clears throat> Ho, everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. And you that have no money, come, buy and eat. Come, buy wine and milk without money and without price. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen so that you may live. I will make with you an everlasting covenant, my steadfast, sure love for David. See, I made him a witness to the peoples, a leader and commander for the peoples. See, you shall call nations that you do not know, and nations that do not know you shall run to you, because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has glorified you, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake their way and the unrighteous their thoughts. Let them return to the Lord that he may have mercy on them. And to our God, for he will abundantly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. <laughs>
Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the 13th chapter. At that very time, there were some present who told Jesus about the Galileans, whose blood Pilate had mingled with their sacrifices. Jesus asked them, Do you think that because these Galileans suffered in this way, they were worse sinners than all other Galileans? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish as they did. Or those 18 who were killed when the Tower of Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were worse offenders than all the others living in Jerusalem? No, I tell you, but unless you repent, you will all perish just as they did. Then Jesus told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came looking for fruit on it and found none. So he said to the gardener, see here, for three years I've been coming for three years, I have come looking for fruit on this fig tree, and still I have found none. Cut it down. Why should it be wasting the soil? The gardener replied, Sir, let it alone for one more year until I dig around it and put manure on it. If it bears fruit next year, well and good. But if not, you can cut it down. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, Lord. Let us pray. God of infinite goodness, throughout the ages you have persevered in claiming and reclaiming your people. Renew us for your call to repentance. Surround us with witnesses to aid us in our journey. And grant us the time to fashion our lives anew. Through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. The deceased poet Mary Oliver asks, Tell me, what is your plan to do with your one wild and precious life? For us as Christians, there are many hymns that ask, how should you spend your life except for the Lord, except with the Lord? Luke shares Jesus telling a story, a parable, a teaching about a fruitless fig tree, a frustrated owner, and a compassionate gardener. The gist of the story, in three words, four, I don't count well. <coughs> Bear fruit or die. <coughs> you never know what tomorrow will bring. Bear fruit or die. That question raises for us again this week, meet the need and plant the seed, our stewardship campaign. If we as individuals, disciples have been given life, Aren't we responsible for making the most of it? As the body of Christ, we are doing, we are doing as Paul, bearing fruit, blooming where planted. And if so, why not? How come? Is a congregation merely for existing, denying the promise as we chanted in the song, that the power and glory of God in Christ Jesus is here and now, present, <coughs> rather than just in the past, that the glory days of First Lutheran are gone, rather than considered present. Are we too often worn down to invest the energy, creativity, and passion in sharing this good news of Jesus with a broken and hurting world? And then if that is the case, then what makes a congregation different from a social club? While our congregations are to live their vocational call, asking the question, what are we to do with our one wild and precious life? How are we to spend our life? We are to spend our life recruiting and equipping disciples, building each other up as the body of Christ existing for sending into the world. Think of it this way, in this sort of stewardship of the garden way. Fruit grows outward from the plant into the light. So too a congregation grows outward while maintaining its deep-rooted connection to Christ, its inward-rootedness. The mission of our holy and triune God is both outward and inward rootedness. 
Our call in, through, and with Christ, as little Christ, Martin Luther described us 500 years ago. As little Christ, we are stewarding the gifts God has given us, our time, our talent, and our resources. God expects us to be fruitful, sharing the best of what we have received, of what we've been given. We are not ever wasted soil. No one is wasted soil. And so we're not supposed to waste the soil where we've been planted here at first in Jamesville. Although we will have times and seasons when we are less than fruitful in following God's mission and ministry, in attending worship often, and sharing generous and sharing generously. Even plants and trees have follow seasons or manure years, during which they rest and replenish. And all good gardeners rotate crops and pay attention to the conditions of the soil, the white, the water, and the light. They may transplant a tree or shrub if its location is not ideal for conducting growth and production. The good gardener Jesus, the Christ, invites and commands us as stewards and giving as our Lord does. Give until we heal. Give until our world heals. Give until First Lutheran heals, heals as we repent into this new way of thinking and behaving as a compassionate gardener made known to us in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The generosity of the First Lutheran Foundation is giving until Jamesville and our global community heals. Each evening in Lent, we are hearing from members of this community that are giving until our homeless youth heal so they can attain a high school diploma. They are giving to give shelter for adult men to move from sheltering together to sheltering with their families. Staff and volunteers, community people of faith, and maybe questioning their faith, here in Jamesville and Rock County, are working with those who are suffering, homeless youth and men, until they heal, until they replenish, for moving forward. Suffering as a condition of human life is still seen as a consequence of sin. It's an ancient misunderstanding. Jesus here is as then as we do today. What did they do? We asked that of the homeless youth and adult men. What did they do? Jesus here is asked, what they, did they do to bring about their shameful death when Pilate murdered the Galilean Jewish people? The ancient historical record cannot confirm or deny these events as Luke reports in our gospel. Pilate was a governor who had the power of terror to dispense and dispose of any humans threatening insurrection. Ancient towers like Siloam fell because they were part of the defenses in cities like Jerusalem. The building technologies and knowledge of that time was limited, so things did fall down. Such calamities, untimely deaths, occurred then as they do now. The murders at the mosque in Christchurch, New Zealand, the airplane falling from the sky in Ethiopia, the flooding where many people in Wisconsin, Iowa, and Nebraska, as well as Mississippi, are suffering. This public suffering exposed by the media is made known to us. But what about all the private suffering amongst us and throughout the globe? Jesus hearers asked about a subject taught in divinity school and confessional seminaries. Theodicy, T-H-E-O-D-I-C-Y, theodicy. How come there's evil and suffering in our world? the world God created for good. How come good people and not so good people experience suffering and pain? 
despair pushed into their lives, regardless of their choices. Jesus answered then and now by only offering himself, the fullness of his life in and with and through suffering, for feeding and watering us in mercy and love by his body and blood. With his cross, we receive healing and hope for entering this suffering world sharing in his suffering as he lived and died to share in our suffering, privately and publicly. Our Lord, the healer of our every ill and the hope for each tomorrow, gives always as we are welcome to give until we and our world heals. Amen.
Seeking the grace, mercy, and love of Almighty God, we offer prayers for the church, for people in need, and for all creation. Compassionate God, call your people to stand firm as citizens of heaven, humbling us by your wondrous love and nurturing such mercy in our hearts and ministries. Hear us, O oh God. Display your faithfulness to creation in the changing of these seasons, drowning out terror in the world, releasing political leaders' pride in fear and acting justly for serving citizens in Ethiopia, New Zealand. In addition, we pray for Wisconsin, Iowa, Nebraska, Mississippi, and all others impacted by flooding. Rush to answer those who cry out to you in time of trial, our call committee and congregation, and discerning the next call pastor, those longing to be parents, whether by bearing or adopting children, any hospitalized, such as Evelyn, Judy, Milford, Joyce, Wayne, and those we name aloud and silently. Build your life-giving shelter for the sake of all parent, guardian, caregiver, and child relationships. Hear us, O oh God. Build up your holy community of saints through the work of bishops and missionaries like Patrick, whom we commemorate today, and Barbara Schmidt, whom we remember. Hear us, O oh God. Stewardship verse this morning is from the 55th chapter of Isaiah. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me, and eat what is good, and delight yourselves in rich food. Stewardship is about making wise choices in life, choices that promote health, well-being, and fruitful, faithful living. Isaiah asks the key questions and provides us wise advice. Isaiah teaches us to be efficient and thrifty with our blessings and resources. Benevolence, life together, stewardship, and witness account for just 3% of our budget here at FLC. I challenge all of us here at First Lutheran to faithfully and prayerfully consider a significant increase in our regular offering so that we can meet the need and plant the seed and truly make a difference in our community. I encourage us as a church and community to do more to witness to our faith and the love of Jesus Christ. What better way to fulfill our mission and grow our congregation? Our purpose here at First Lutheran Church is not to keep this wonderful building open. Our purpose is not to keep the parking lot free of snow and ice. 
Our purpose is not to keep the building warm during frigid winters or cool during blistering summers. Our purpose here at First Lutheran Church is to reach, nourish, and empower people with the gospel of Jesus Christ. A lot of our outreach programs do just that. With Second Harvest, Gifts Men's Shelter, Masterpiece, Echo, the Academy Singers, and Dems work through music in the Fourth, fourth Ward, Confirmation, Journey of Faith, and many others. These programs help fulfill our mission and spread the good news of Jesus Christ. In closing, I'd like to read a short excerpt from A House United, How the Church Can Save the World by Alan Hilton. Near the end of his ministry and the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus pictures for his disciples the very end of time, when the Son of Man will gather all the nations together and assess their lives to the dramatic world of the story, the assessor is a king on a throne who divides all humanity into two groups, with one important commonality and one important difference. Sheep and goats share a single common experience. Both groups have encountered needy people whom Jesus calls the least of these, my brothers and sisters. They both met people who are hungry, thirsty, strangers, naked, sick, and in prison. These two groups part ways, though, in their response to need. Sheep have fed, given drink, welcomed, clothed, and visited. Goats have done nothing. That difference determines their ultimate destiny. Sheep get the right-hand side during the chat, and eternal bliss afterward. Goats are on the left and get everlasting fire. Each, of, each and every one of us need to do our part to fulfill our mission and help First Lutheran Church meet the need and plant the seed. Thank you, Chair, Stewardship Chairman.
graciously sent. Let us pray together. Generous God, you feed us with the harvest of the land, and you provide for our every need. Receive our gifts of money, imagination, and labor, and transform them into a feast that welcomes all. Jesus Christ, our host and our guest. Amen. We pray. On the night in which our Lord was betrayed, he took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat, this is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. <coughs> Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, Amen. have a hallowed be your name. Your
the splendor of your love, the wonder of your power, the fullness of your joy, the Holy Spirit, fulfilling us the promise of your grace. God who fills creation with abundance, Christ who spreads his arms in forgiveness, Holy Spirit who draws ever near to us, bless you and bring you to life everlasting. Amen. Your second hand is found on the back of your bulletin, Sovereign Maker of all things. Peace, remember the poor. Thanks be to God. 